So we now come to a very special distinction, the degree of honorary fellow in the American College of Radiology. This recognition is bestowed upon distinguished individuals who by virtue of their residence, education, profession, or even where they received their board certification, they are ineligible for admission as members of the college other than honorary. This year, we have invited two outstanding leaders to join our fellowship. The 2016 honorary fellows are Dr. Peter J. Hoskin from London, England, and Dr. Christopher L. Zollicoffer from Zurich, Switzerland. The honorary fellows are here this evening and are well known to many of us through their strong ties with the colleagues in the United States and at the ACR. Now I would like to invite Dr. Peter J. Hoskin to join me at the podium. So when practice changing research emerges, it's never by accident. It's the result of a committed group of professionals working under extraordinary leadership to find answers to difficult questions about patient care. One such revolutionary research trial was the randomized phase three trial that established RA223 as the standard treatment for certain groups of patients with metastatic prostate cancer. Many consider this to be one of the most influential studies of the treatment of GU cancer in the past several years. Peter J. Hoskin, MD, was one of the key investigators in this trial, adding to a professional roster of important trials in radiotherapy for bladder cancer, lymphoma, and bone metastases, and in prostate brachytherapy. Dr. Hoskin attended medical school at the University of London's Royal Free Hospital School of Medicine and trained in clinical oncology at the Royal Hos Harsden Hospital in London. He has held numerous leadership positions in organizations such as the European Society for Therapeutic Radiation and Oncology, the American Society for Radiation Oncology, the Royal College of Radiologists, the National Radiotherapy Activity Group of the Department of Health, the National Radiotherapy Clinical Information Group, and the National Cancer Research Institute. He has given over 100 lectures at major meetings and conferences. He serves on the editorial boards of many prestigious journals, contributed nearly 300, 300 peer-reviewed publications, edited 16 textbooks, and authored or co-authored 42 book chapters. Those of you who are residents, please think about this productivity level. <laughs> Dr. Hoskin is a consultant in clinical oncology at Mount Vernon Cancer Center in Northwood, England, and professor of clinical oncology at the University College London, where he focuses on GU radiotherapy, lymphoma, and palliative care. Dr. Hoskin has received the Royal College's gold medal, perhaps the highest honor bestowed upon a radiologist in the UK, is chief editor of Clinical Oncology, the Journal of the Royal College of Radiologists. He also serves on the editorial boards of several other radiation oncology and cancer journals. Through influential publications and research trials, Dr. Hoskin's expertise has reached beyond the UK impacting clinical oncology and the care of cancer patients worldwide. And it is fitting that the American College of Radiology present Dr. Hoskin with honorary fellowship. Thank you very much, Dr. Kirshner. Uh, it is indeed a, a great honor to be standing here and receiving the honorary fellowship of the ACR. Indeed, I look back at the uh, list of previous honorary fellows, and I did for a moment wonder if, in fact, you'd got my email confused with someone else, uh, because that list is indeed a, a list of people who I have for many years admired and respected, many of whom have had a major influence on, on my life and my career. And in providing a resume, I would like to highlight four of those. Um, the first, in fact, was Professor Anne Barrett, who was the last English oncologist to receive this honor of uh, fellowship of the ACR, and you awarded that to Anne in 2006. And uh, it was just three weeks ago that she and I were in Turin. Uh, we were both giving award lectures for the ESTRO meeting. And I reminded her that in fact, she is the very reason that I may be standing here, because when I was a, a very young medical student, and we had an elective period, I went to the Royal Marsden Hospital and Anne was a, a newly appointed senior lecturer with uh, Professor Mike Peckham. And she took me around and she showed me this wonderful world of oncology. And from that moment, uh, there was only one career I was going to follow. 
And then looking back further to 1981, 1981 was a, a, a good year for the Brits. Uh, you uh, actually appointed four English uh, radiologists to the Honorary Fellowship. And one of those was Mary Catterall. And Mary was a, a very individualistic lady who I worked for when I was doing internal medicine at the Hammersmith Hospital. And she was an oncologist who ran the cyclotron there, one of the first cyclotrons uh, to be producing clinical neutron beams. And there I learned that clinical observation and clinical research is essential when developing new treatments, because there we found that the radiobiology of neutrons, with all its promise, uh, did not deliver in the clinic. And indeed, there were many uh, major morbidities with normal tissue damage uh, from that effect. And going back further, 1972, uh, Julian Bloom uh, was your honorary fellow. And Julian Bloom and I worked together at the Royal Marsden. He was one of my mentors and teachers for uh, several years while I was there. And he was a very enigmatic, powerful man. He was chairman at the Royal Marsden for many years. One of his characteristics was starting his day at 9 o'clock and finishing his day at 10 p.m. and expecting his juniors to be with him all the time. And uh, my uh, family would uh, be uh, upset to know that that's where I got my habits from as well. Uh, but what I learned from him was that uh, if you're going to achieve things, uh, you don't do it uh, just by pitching up at 10 o'clock and going home at 4 o'clock. Uh, you need to put in the hours and the work uh, to deliver the goods. And then finally, coming up to 1994, uh, Stan Dish, who uh, was at Mount Vernon, uh, he had the courage or the temerity or perhaps even the foolishness to appoint me uh, in 1992 to Mount Vernon as a consultant. In fact, I took his post when he retired. And there I've been for the last 20 odd years. Uh, initially, I worked with uh, his wife, um, Michelle Saunders, and together we built up a, a very active academic unit with the Gray Laboratory when it was there. And I owe a lot to, to Stan and Michelle uh, for the time I've had there and the uh, research programs that have developed. So it is indeed a great honor to be standing here. My thanks to the um, American College of Radiology, to the Board of Chancellors, to the uh, Honors Committee. Particular thanks to Simon Lowe, who was my main promoter, I think, uh, and uh, took me forward uh, to the committees for approval. And uh, of course, thanks to all my colleagues at Mount Vernon. I should perhaps point out that the Mount Vernon I work at uh, is in North London, not in uh, Virginia. Uh, the main difference being that we were established in 1868, and the uh, Victorian buildings that uh, were occupied uh, moving out to northward are largely unchanged, uh, whereas I looked with some envy at the pictures of Mount Vernon Hospital, Virginia, where you have a very modern uh, purpose-built uh, building. And finally, thanks to Frida. Frida White uh, from the ACR has been fantastic in sorting out the logistics of getting me here, being very uh, dutiful, looking after me all the time I've been here, sorting out things, and I'm very grateful to Frida for uh, making this visit uh, as smooth and, and uh, as enjoyable as possible. So it's a great honor to be here. My thanks to the ACR uh, for inviting me here for this wonderful occasion. Thank you. Take hands, let's step over here and get a photo taken.